you secure your secure your email. Now we have some email challenges challenges that we, we see. The one is the human factor. All the issues in the organization they are caused by human factor because uh, we are the one who interact with the emails. At this point, you allow that some some attacks will come as a malware, which even if you don't uh, interact with them or you don't click on them, you just enter in the, in the system. I said about the social engineering, which normally happens to the to the to the to the staff within the organization. We have the spam it's into the resources. Why do we say spam? Some of the, sometimes you find that uh, your device is uh, very slow, or you find there is an issue with the bandwidth. You see the network is very slow. Maybe there's a there's some malware which was sent through the email and duplicates itself within the within the organization and uh, affect other devices. That's making the network bandwidth to be high and also makes your computer to be slow. You have a controlled data transmission. This is where you share your information with the, the organization or outside the organization. How do you ensure that your data is secure when you are transmitting? So we, when you transmit the data which is not controlled, you risk the data leak because you, you, maybe there's a file you wanted to share, which is supposed to not be accessed by outside, but you end up, you end up the sharing with somebody who is not supposed to access. Then you have the gateway security. This is where we find that, yes, you have email protection, but how well have you configured your security within, the, within your organizations? That's why we say that even if you have email, you have a gateway. As a early technology team, we assist you, we work with you and ensure that you have the right the configurations and the settings of the policy to ensure that even if the emails are within the organization or outside the organization, as we can see that you also have insider threats which are caused by the staff within the organization. We assist you to configure those policies to ensure that you are secure. You have the targeted attacks which are hard to catch and block. This is where the user uses a set an email, which uh, when you look at that email, you can you just see it as a as a genuine email. But at the back of the attacker, there's something he wants to get from you. So ensure that uh, your gateway is well protected. You have the lack of protection on endpoints. This is where we say about the endpoint the antivirus. We know that uh, viruses and malware, when they get into your, in your computer without an antivirus, you you will not be able to fight with them. That's really the, the, as even if you protect your mailboxes or the, your exchange, first protect your device, protect your laptop, protect your phone with the, an antivirus. And it's not only the an antivirus; it's an updated antivirus and a licensed and a licensed antivirus. Avoid using the free trial versions, which also they act as a as a vector to, to the, allow the, the entry of viruses. You have unchecked alerts and admin uh, to admin. This is where you have the console, you have the management of your emails. You never check the admin never checks the the reports. Maybe there was an attack which was registered uh, a week ago. But since you don't uh, check your console, the attack will continue going through the network and affecting more, more, more users and more emails, which also consumes bandwidth and storage within the organization. Then we have uh, how do threats move within the organization? As you can see from the picture here, on, uh, on, my, on the right hand side, you can receive a user. A user is visiting a, a phishing website, which which has a malicious malicious file or malicious contact. But you see, when visiting the that site was sent through the through the email, which the user was able to access. But if you have a on your gateway, the gateway is able to block a malicious email, which uh, do not allow the 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 link to be accessed through the mail server. So as, a, as you have your, your gateway secured and mail server, you ensure that uh, 
any file which had been sent or any link which has been sent, it will be it will be blocked from uh, accessing. That's why even if you have ins inside threads, inside a thread here, when he or she tries to send an email, if they have an, a, a, a layer protection layer between the gateway and the mail server, so the file, the email will not be will not go through because it will be blocked. Also, from the user, here you see we have a unprotected endpoint trying to access the try to access the command and control server. If you have the endpoint blocked here, you have the endpoint will block any link which which may contain some infection. You have from here you can see that the cyber attacks get more targeted so to be the email address. It was reported that phishing was the most common type of uh, cyber crime in 2020, in 2020, doubling with from 2019. As I said, because of the COVID, and phishing uh, was the top action variety seen in DHS in 2021, because they knew that everyone is using email to communicate to the, to the organization. That's why 75% of organizations around the world experience some kind of phishing attack in 2020. This is a high number of attack. And uh, for, for those who are not uh, protected, they, they made a loss because uh, the attackers were able to penetrate to the organization and did what they had targeted to do. So as we move on with the technology, make sure that you have a uh, protection on your email. Then here we have an example of how the attachments will move from your, will be able to, to move within the organization. Yes, you receive a, an email from somebody, like for example, here you have somebody called john.covin. He says he's, he's from Kaspersky. who said a, a, an email with an attachment, malicious attachment email. From here, you can see the the extension of the of the of the attachments is .exe. Most of the time, we receive the emails. We receive the attachment. We don't check the the attachment. We just download the the attachment to your email to your device. And if it was an uh, .exe, the, the the attachment is set. It said that once you download, it tries to learn on the background. So with the with the configuration with the Kaspersky security for mail server, it will block those uh, attachments so that they won't be able to reach to the, to the user. And you, when you check at the contact of the email or the body of the email, you can see here we are told that when you check the nature of this email, you are triggering you to click to a certain link, which is a, has a malicious URL. The, the, the attackers use the, such link to to steal your information because once you click the link, it will start learning at the background. Yes, when it learns at the background, it connects to your servers and they introduce more viruses into your computer and more learn uh, somewhere to the uh, to the network, which also continues to steal your data. Uh, as we continue with the attachment, you see that here uh, the exe file, as I mentioned, the file might be a PDF, might be a, an Excel or a Word document. But you find that we are not most of the time. You don't check the extension. You just open the file. Maybe you read uh, read it, or maybe when you you are not able to read it when it has a malware. Sometimes you find a user user complaining that complaining that I you send me a file which I'm not able to read. That is a virus. But if you had uh, well secured your your emails, you could not you uh, could not find this this file in your in your email. Then, as I said that the about the about the link which you access, here you see that the link seems to be to be true or to be not to be and not to be malicious. When you click on it, it will direct you to another domain. The domain is, will be able to the, the and then they are able to get into your information. They steal the data. They scan your device and then they steal your data and end up causing more harm within the organization. We also have the spoofing where the email the, the email was sent to spoof your, the contact within the organization. But with the, 
light, config light configuration, this one will help you to stop even the spoofing email because we find that most of the users, they don't know, they, they will not be able to de de differentiate between a genuine sender of the email. So they just, call, they just an email they get in their, in their mailbox, they just open and read. So as we continue, as we continue as any technology, we just not only uh, give you the solution, we configure for you, we work with you to ensure that you, you attain a maximum protection within your organization. Uh, we also have some business, uh, I mentioned about business email co compromise, where we say that uh, this way you target a business to defraud the company, especially the organization with with the, with the name of stealing data. As you can see from the first picture here, we have the spear phishing, which is a scam targeted to a specific individual, maybe a CEO, head of marketing, head of finance, with an intention to steal the data for malicious purposes. Most of the time we find these people within the, or within the management, they receive an email, maybe say that uh, CEO has, uh, has said that you authorize a certain amount of money to go to certain, approach, certain project. Uh, that email came from, uh, from a malicious site. So we care to open on how to open those emails. To, because uh, once you allow the fishing to come into your organization, it will abuse the trust you enjoy with your colleagues, managers, and business associates, which end up uh, creating more harm, creating more threats, and more cost, uh, costing loss within the, within the organization. It makes the decision more credible by modeling the type of email your attackers and how you are likely to believe the, the email. Those emails sent to do the phishing. As I say, they look very genuine. They appeal to you that uh, you are tempted to click and to open them and access the, the content. As any technology, we are offers like Kaspersky security for mail server. We, when you look at that for mail server here, it offers some components which will be able to fight with those threats, like the admiral protection, which will be able to detect the known and unknown threats. That's fighting even the zero day threats within the organization. We have the security management and, report, and reporting. This will guide you, guide you with the detailed reports of how you are doing with your security. And uh, from those reports, you get some, uh, when, maybe when you get alert, you'll be able to act on it. You'll be able to check which email, which address is receiving the, maybe the spams or who is uh, within the organization who is responding to such email. We have the anti-phishing component, which as I said, which will go, we detect uh, malware within the, within the organization or within the emails and block them from, from being accessed by the end user. We have intelligent protection, intelligence spam protection uh, with, the, with the technology and how the world is moving. We have seen that uh, many people are sending spam, spam emails. Even if you block them, the, the sender will change the, the email address and you send it, you send to, to a, you send it using another email address. We can't stop spams, but we block them with the light, with the light solution. We also we have the flexible deployment integration as a area technology when you deploy, when you, we work with you to deploy and integrate with all the, all the email, all the email platform you have within the organization, like multiple platforms that you deploy, we configure for you. We have, it also ensures we have the data transmission control, which uh, filters the emails which are coming within the organization, either from the trust, from trusted or untrusted Send a recipient list. So, as you see, not only the selling the uh, antivirus, but also configuration. Here we have the Casper security for gateway, for mail gateway. It shows us how the how the emails are still moving within the organization. Here we have the user. Also, we have the gateway when you try to access the to send an email. It will be restricted if an email has an issue. 
you have the surely that the end point here blocks the any malicious email. And when it moves the you access the internet, again the malicious email will be blocked, will be blocked. So with all the solutions we have, like uh, the Kaspersky, we have the Kaspersky security networks which keeps listing the new the new updates of how of how to tackle with the current evolving threats within the within the within the technology. We also have Kaspersky security for mail server for crowd mail. As we say that people are moving to the crowd. Don't be left uh, alone when you go people they go to the crowd. Also we ensure that we secure your your crowd. And also you have Kaspersky security for Microsoft Exchange Server to protect your exchange servers. Also in summary we have the security mail or crowd which will be able to integrate with your mailboxes, scan your intranet mail. And then we have the Kaspersky for, for Microsoft Exchange servers, which scan your email, Microsoft emailing structure, and then protect your emails. We have Kaspersky for Linux mail server, Kaspersky for mail server gateway. For those people who are using the port mail, we have the port mail for Fortinet to protect your, also your emails. This one has a different layers of uh, protection which will protect you from known threats, suspected threats, zero day threats, impersonation attempts, business email compromise. From the diagram here below, you can see we have the we have known threats which will be able to be blocked. And then if we have some emails that are suspicious, if the with the configuration, the fault mail will be able to identify this as a suspicious email. Even before before the email get email gets to the to the recipient or the to the employee, it will be able to be isolated and be blocked. And non threats and business business compromise, this one will also be blocked through the automated secure gateway. For those people who are using the Bitdefender, we have a gravity zone email security for Bitdefender. Which also will, which uh, will filter your email and also block any message which uh, may have a suspicious email, which have a leak, which uh, may be used to defraud you, and also so that to ensure that by the minute, by the time the email gets to the user, to the end user or the recipients, that email is screened. We also have the Sophos, which uh, helps you to to secure your emails through the reputation filtering, the setter of the education, header and number uh, detection, anti phishing, anti, anti spam, and so forth, cell stomp. As you see from here, from the diagram on your right hand side, you see that uh, 80 to 90 percent of emails may be rejected because they may have uh, those phishing links. 2% we see that they, they were deleted because they were spam, 5 were quarantine, and 10% are clean email. So before you, you, from that diagram here, you can see that, yes, you received a lot of email, but only 10% were clean. Why? Because we have a solution which is able to filter all the emails to ensure that all the emails are clean as when you receive them. Then it also assists you to block the malicious malicious URL within the malicious URLs, configurable warnings, so that do not disrupt your the end users, so that they can as they work, they be able to achieve the their goals, so that uh, within the, uh, through the configuration and the when they receive the email, also we help you to protect against fraudulent email addresses, block phishing attacks. Combination of SPM, DKIM, spam, and application. That's plus email header analysis. As you clean up their email and ensure that you are safe. As we have mentioned, that we have seen that we have we have uh, seen the email as the primary vector. We have seen some of the threats. We have the solution. We have that uh, within the organization area technology. And uh, as we moved, as we as we said earlier, if you have any question, you can post there. We will answer. We answer to you. So, 
At this time, I would like to pose a question to my fellow panelist Nelson. You have said you have I have explained about the all the threats and also about how to the solution we have. But we also need to do the authentication of the emails. How do we authenticate the email? Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Steve. Uh, thank you so much, Steve, for taking us through that uh, elaborate um, um, and detailed uh, details about how we can secure our emails. So I think to cover your question, the email authentication uh, can be done. Sometimes we are faced with the, um, sometimes we are faced with the cases where we need to authenticate uh, probably the packages, just like in a poster. There's a way normally you can receive a package, but you are not really sure whether this package is coming from the person uh, from which it says it's coming from. So when it comes to email, the, this thing becomes so serious because uh, the there's a lot of information which can be exchanged and uh, some of it can be malicious. And uh, when, when you get a, an email that comes from probably somebody you know very well, but the content of that email does not look like the person you 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 know. Then this question needs to be to be answered and uh, needs a very good 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 answer. So email authentication is a very um, um, a big topic, especially in uh, in when you're handling email security. So email authentication. These are technologies. There are some technologies that um, uh, normally help us to uh, to determine whether uh, this particular email has been received or it's, it's, it's exactly as it says it is. If it says it's coming from so and so, then uh, um, when we have this particular uh, uh, protocols, then we are sure that this one comes from, can only be from, from, from this person. So there are three um, protocols that have been uh, so far um, been the ones that are majorly used. They're not the only ones, but there are others. Uh, though these are the ones that have uh, proved to be uh, very efficient in a way. Though they are not really 100%, but to an extent they're really working, working, working um, uh, some amazing, uh, they're doing a good job. So email itself, the SMTP protocol, from its inception, it was deemed to be promiscuous in the sense that many people can it's easily, it can be abused easily. So these, prof, these, these protocols came in handy so that they can strengthen this, this uh, SMTP protocol so that we can continue enjoying the usefulness of uh, the SMTP um, uh, protocol. So the protocols that came to assist uh, the three, they're mostly known as the Trinity of Mail Security. Uh, one of it is called SPF which in long form, it's called a sender policy framework. The other one is called DKIM, uh, which is domain keys identified mail. And the other one is called um, uh, DMAC, which is domain message authentication reporting and, and, and conformers. So as we go to the next uh, slide, we see we have SPF. We have SPF. SPF is basically a record you normally publish with the DNS, and uh, it helps in authenticating. As I have already said, SPF is the sender policy framework. It's basically an email validation protocol designed to detect and uh, block email spoofing. It allows mail exchanges, exchanges to verify that incoming mail, um, mail from a specific domain comes from an IP address authorized by the domain's administrators. So an SPF record is a TXT record. For those who have handled the DNS, they know how to, uh, to, to make those entries. So it's an SPF, SP, an SPF record is a TXT record found in the DNS that specifies which IP addresses and uh, or servers are allowed to send mails from that domain. After an email message is sent, the ISP checks the message return path domain then they compare the IP address that send the email to the IP address listed in the return path domains SPF record um, to see if it aligns. If it does, then the ISP confirms the SPF authentication and delivers the message. 
to answer the question of uh, why is it important, SPF is a, is a proposed standard that helps, as I had earlier, I was trying to explain, it helps protect email users from potential spammers. Email, email spam and phishing uh, often use fraud uh, from addresses, just as my colleague uh, uh, Steve was explaining about uh, um, phishing. So email spam and phishing often use forge, if, um, forge from addresses and domains. Therefore, most consider publishing and checking SPF records as one of the most reliable and simple to use anti-spam techniques. If you have a good reputation or uh, if you have a good sending uh, uh, reputation, there are those uh, servers that normally um, they, they check on the reputation of particular IPs for those that are spamming, those are phishing sites and stuff. So if you have a good, a very good reputation or you are um, a company, an enterprise that um, is known to have a good reputation and probably handles um, as specific clients of interest, then a spammer might attempt to send an email from uh, your domain in order to take advantage of your good sender reputation with ISPs. But properly set up SPF, SPF authentication shows the receiving ISP that even though the domain may be yours, the sender or the sending server has not been authorized to send email from your domain. So uh, for that one, we lost the, the inventors of SPF because at least that one gave us a way to really uh, think about the, 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 the actors that have a malicious intent. As we go to DKIM, we can see from the diagram, uh, the, that's the format of uh, how the DKIM, DKIM keys are uh, set up in the DNS. Uh, the steps are uh, just as I indicated. First, when, uh, <clears throat> when the sender sends the email, it is intercepted and DKIM uh, check is invoked. Uh, the receiver checks with the DNS, the DNS um, domain or the domain from where the email is coming from. If uh, the key, the public key of uh, the DKIM, the public key, the public part of the DKIM key that has been uh, published in the DNS of the sending, sending, send, send, sending uh, user uh, is equal to the one that uh, is in the email header, then it's given, it's going to be to be authenticated. So DKIM, uh, I had, has, as I had earlier said, it stands for the domain key identified mail. It lets an organization or a handler of the mail messages. Sometimes you might outsource some of the services for sending emails, like uh, if, um, you're probably running a campaign and sometimes uh, you you see the need that probably if you use your your um, your domain or your ip you might be limited but there are some some other tools like um, probably oracle and other mail send mail sending services so you can give them the responsibility to send emails on your behalf so then DKIM, it lets organization or the handlers of the messages like Oracle or uh, Wix to take responsibility for the for a message in transit. DKIM attaches a new domain name identifier to a message and uses cryptographic techniques to validate authorization for its presence. The identifier acts independently of any other identifier in the message, such as the authority the authors from field domain. DKIM also uh, is a TXT record, which is uh, published in the DNS, and it bases trust between the sender and the receiver. A digital signature is a double check is, is double checked with every email sent using DKIM, meaning that you'll be sure you're not being impersonated. So DKIM email security is designed using the encryption keys. So why is it important? Again, DKIM comes in, uh, the importance of DKIM comes in three. 
The first one is that it serves as a proof uh, that the content of an email has not been tampered with during the transition. It also comes as a proof that the header in the email have not changed since the original sender sent, and there is no new from domain. The from domain is, um, this is a header, it's a, it's a tag that when you check the header of, uh, of, uh, of any email, you are going to see different tags. So the from domain is one of the tags that is, is there. And uh, if that one is tampered with, you, you'll be able to, to know. So DKIM uh, checks the from domain. And uh, if it has not been tampered, then it normally uh, flags it as it passes the DKIM test. The third one is that it, 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 it proves the sender of the email on the, the DKIM domain or authorized by the owner of that domain. DKIM uses encryption algorithm to create a pair of electronic keys. This, it normally do, does a create two, two keys, one being a private, the other one is a, is, a, is a public. So the private is normally stored within the computer that you are creating. So for this case, if the server on which uh, you are sending the email, the sending server, that's the one that's normally going to uh, store the private key. And during the sending, this private key is normally attached to the email on the header, the email header. And on the receiving end, the receiving side, once an email has been received, the DKIM check is going to be invoked and it's going to be checked against the corresponding public key of the, of the DKIM on the sender's DNS. So, so ideally it creates a two way, a, a way to sign and, uh, an, an email with digitally encrypted signature. The next one is uh, uh, DMARC. DMARC, as I've earlier said, it's uh, in, 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 in full. It's called a uh, domain-based message authentication, reporting and conformance. This is an added authentication method that uses both SPF and DKIM to verify whether or not an email was actually sent by, by the owner of the friendly from domain that the user sees. The friendly from domain is also part of the tags. The tags that I've been talking about, there's the from, there's another friendly from, sometimes it's uh, some, some mail clients. They refer it to as, um, um, they give different they give different names but uh they serve the same same purpose so in order for dmark to pass both the spf uh and dkim must pass and at least one of them must be aligned in short there is no dmark without uh dkim or spf so it's a it's 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 what i'm trying to say it's a three-legged uh as two which uh the dmark it's just a policy we normally uh, publish in the DNS. And it relies the verdict from the SPF or from the verdict on the, of, of, from, from, from DKIM. So DMARC checks for uh, a DKIM pass or um, SPF pass before authorizing any email, meaning you are double, doubly secured. Uh, first being both authentications passing in the case that the email is coming from um, an authorized server and that the header information has not been tampered with to falsify alignment. The second one being at least one authentication alignment, align, aligning proves that the sender owns the DNS space of the friendly from and um, is therefore who they say they are. Uh, why is DMARC again important? Any message that does not align is treated as phishing or spoofed, and it's subsequently not going to be delivered to the, to the recipient. So your reputation is going to be reserved if uh, you're the one that probably uh, your, your domain, you're, you're the one probably that has been targeted. So phishing or spoofing, as my colleague, uh, uh, as my colleague has said, has put it, is a fraudulent practice of sending malicious emails or pretending to be someone else. Therefore, with DMARC, you are fully protected and your environment is kept 
kept clean. So lastly, do we, if we may, we may, we may, we may answer the question if really authentication really necessary. We normally say um, any email providers, they recommend the use of uh, mail authentications and to them it proves, it, you, it, it proves to the ISPs that you are serious, you are a serious sender and willing to take precautionary measures to protect your identity and reputation. So anybody who does not um, uh, implement the, um, this trinity of mail security, the DMAC, DKIM, and SPF, sometimes um, you, you are, your, your domain, your domain or, uh, yeah, your domain is vulnerable and you can be, it can be, you 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 can you can you can be abused anytime. So it's so safe. It's safe for for you to have these things in place. And to do that one, we normally have um, we have partnered with a couple of um, partners. Just as my colleague was going through the different uh, solutions that uh, we have, we have uh, Kaspersky. We have forty forty mail. We have uh, uh, gravity zone. We have uh, other others depending on the environment that you have. So whether your environment, your emails are, 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 are hosted in the cloud, probably in um, Exchange Online, there's a specific solution that's going to suit uh, that particular uh, environment. When probably you're running a Linux environment. Also, the Linux environment are vulnerable, are vulnerable if they're not given or they're not protected by us, um, a targeted solution, like probably uh, one that is specifically meant for the emails. So what you need to do is just to reach out to us. Um, we'll have a short discussion to understand what the, the, you, how your environment is and are going to give you the appropriate advice on which particular solution is going to work for you. Don't worry about probably if you have an endpoint uh, this particular from this particular vendors uh, and probably a firewall from this particular vendors. There's a way this can 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 be mixed. You can work with any, but it also depends on uh, uh, some of the underlying factors. Which in the discussions we normally identify and advise. This is the best the best solution that's going to work in an environment. So. For that, I think I'll hand over the meeting to our moderator. Um, thank, you. thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Nelson and Steve, for that wonderful presentation on email security. And I'll give you our lovely attendees some time. This is where we have a question and answer session. Feel free to type in your question and we'll be glad to answer it. Uh, yeah, so this is. We've, we've looked at email as a we've looked at email security or, or emails as a threat vector. We've also seen the threats that come in through the emails. We've we looked at the solutions, but probably there's a question you may be having concerning this, and this is where we answer you and help you probably get a clear understanding on some place where you may be having um, some questions. And as you type in your questions, I'll say that we all we probably all do not like receiving phone calls from people who pretend to be who they are not. Probably you've received a call from someone who said they were your banker and they wanted to change some settings with your bank, but we all know that those people are con men. In the same way, this is how, um, why you need email security. It's just for that same reason. You actually stop these threats before they get to your organization. You actually stop these emails before they get to your inbox. And you know that for in cyber security, oh hello Billy, uh, feel free to type in your question and we'll be glad to to answer it. Yeah, feel free to type. Thank you. You know that in cyber security, we have been saying that the human element, the the people themselves, are the largest cause of um, entry point because of maybe someone clicking a link that can cause even loss up to millions of shillings. But how do you stop even the humans from making such a mistake, have such a solution that stops these emails from getting to the inbox of the said people in the first place. So this is the very importance of having email security in place in your organizations. And feel free to 
um, to reach out. We are here to help and to to listen to you. What do you want to achieve? How does the environment look like? And there's always something that we can do to um, to 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 that environment. So I can see some questions here. Uh, Nelson, you can feel free to answer this one. At what point is a domain blacklisted by a, an ISP? Is it possible for that to happen because one is receiving spam emails? Uh, yeah, I uh, can take that question. Yeah, it's possible um, for a domain to be blacklisted. And normally there are those servers that they act as uh, the police they police the mail environment so that the offenders are properly brought to book so that uh, if there's anything that's probably has not been configured well or uh, they are malicious, these are uh, servers. Mostly we refer them as blacklisting servers. So you might find a particular IP address or a domain has been listed there. So if you are listed there, most likely you have uh, issues with your domain, your mail environment. Either you need to sanitize one or two things. So what happens is they, they, these particular servers, they, are, they normally have specific uh, things they normally check. So if you are blocked by, or if you are blacklisted in one of the servers, what you need to check is, um, is, it a, is it a spam, is it a spam, is it a server that normally checks for uh, the, the spammers? So if you, you have found yourself in that list, then you need to check. Uh, um, you need to check your your emails. Most likely, you are you are spamming. So it's possible for a domain to be blacklisted, and you can even know the the the, the cause of why you have been blacklisted. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nelson, for that. Uh, we have another question from Mr. Billy, and I'll float it to the team of panelists. Um, Office 365 comes with Windows Defender. Does the email solution work as an API, or is the solution an alternative for Windows Defender? Uh, I think I can also take this question. Uh, let me reread it again. Uh, Office 365 comes with the uh, Windows Defender. Does the solution work as an API or the solution an alternative for Windows Defender? So for Office 365, there's, um, there are different integration methods for the third party solutions like um, um, some some of them actually mostly they normally do integrate with an API. Some some of them it's REST API, and others depending on um, I think the the vendors. But uh, yes, you can uh, work. You can add on top of it, or but some some depending on the package which you have for Office 365. There are some packages which do not offer the protection for for mail. So if probably your package doesn't have that uh, you need to carefully check which package you are you are you are you are, you are getting so there are there are others that normally come with the with the protection the microsoft protection but uh, others do not come with the, the protection so for such also you also need to do um you do do a, a thorough check you are you are research on which which mail protection security you need to work with on your environment. So the solution, it can work. And uh, the integration is by API. Most of them, the, the ones that I've seen, they integrate using uh, the API method. Thank you so much, Nelson. Uh, I've posted a link at the chat box. It's a very brief form. It takes less than a minute for you to fill. Uh, and we will be glad to get back to you. Yeah, feel free to fill in that form and we'll be glad to get back to you and take this up. You know, some, some environments are very unique. They have very specific needs that may not be addressed in such a public um, forum. But 
uh, but privately, we can always set up demos, we can always set up trials and, and even meetings to just discuss and get to understand your, uh, your business environment and which solution is most suitable for your needs. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, even as you fill that form. Uh, again, I'll ask, uh, is there someone who may be having another question, please? We still have some few more minutes. Yeah, if you do have a question, feel free to type it there and we'll be glad to answer. Also, uh, th there we have our contacts uh, displayed on your screen. We have our email address. You can write to us. You can give us a call. You can visit our website and you have all our details. Our testimonials are there and you can see um, the range of endpoint solutions, data protection solutions, and even uh, network solutions, uh, network protection solutions that we do have. Okay. Um, there is a, a a question from Mr. Billy. He says, comment on the GDPR compliance in regard to the solution. Again, I'll put this to the team of panelists uh, to comment on the GDPR compliance in regard to the solution. Uh, a few weeks ago, Actually, we had a, a webinar on on DLP, that is data loss protection. And the engineer, Dennis, who was taking us through that webinar, uh, uh, said that some industries have very specific laws that govern their operations. Uh, some are, are like in the banking, the, the finance institutions, banking, microfinance, circles, they have very strict laws, some national, some international that govern them. And so some of these regulation and compliance laws actually demand some people to have certain solutions in place for them actually to be licensed and even authorized by the government. Uh, and so that would be my co comment on compliance and email solutions and even other solutions, because one way you achieve or one way to look at data loss prevention is by having email security. I'll give an example with Sophos. In the Sophos email uh, solution, there is a, a DLP or a data loss protection policy, which prevents people in your organization from actually sending out confidential data. Yeah, that would be my comment, but I also uh, would like to hear uh, someone else from the team uh, give a comment as well. Yeah, I think uh, to add on that, uh, Samuel, uh, the solutions which uh, we have, we have um, what we have, we've partnered with actually are some of the best uh, that are offered in the market. And uh, they normally go through the tests, the various tests, and uh, the compliance is one of the things that normally I checked. So by the time uh, a product is rated, then uh, you're sure that this is, uh, it, it it complies. There are some things, probably some of the other details which we might not be very uh, very keen to note. But this particular testing, the uh, bodies that normally check on the compliance, then they are very uh, thorough in their work. And once they have run the this particular solutions, uh, you can be sure some of those those those, those the things that have uh, been passed the the GDR GG. Some of the 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 G P D. Uh, let me let me get it here. G D P P R. So that one I think shouldn't be a very big concern. However, if there's a concern, uh, what you need to do is uh, uh we we'll check. Probably you can select the particular solution, and uh, we'll be able to confirm. To what extent probably has this particular solution uh, been compliant? Thank, thank you so much, Nelson. Yes, uh, actually, if you'd like to have a um, to, to watch the recording of our past webinar, even that specific one I've mentioned on data loss prevention, I've posted the link to our YouTube channel. All our webinars are posted on there. You can subscribe and have a, a look at them. Uh, yes, and also write to us. There's that form I had posted as well. Uh, you can fill in 
uh, your details there, Mr. Billy, and we'll be glad to pick it up and also uh, talk more about compliance and look at your environment and what exactly, what laws exactly um, you need to be comply with and we'll get a suitable solution for that. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for attending today's webinar. It has been a wonderful time with you. I hope you've been, I hope you've filled in the form. Uh, it's been a wonderful time. We'd like to see you again in our upcoming webinar next month. It's always a pleasure to have you on board, get to, to interact, to get to li listen to each other and learn and grow on how best we can protect our environments, our data, and also our businesses. Thank you um, and I enjoy your, enjoy your afternoon.